Hi, this is Johnny Bergen with another Chicago Blues guitar lesson. Um, I am at the Galveston Guitar Lounge, and there might be some other guitar loungers in the store. You might hear some background noise, but uh, that's okay. I'm playing a guitar here called a Fowl Con, like a waterfowl con, Fowl Con. Um, Esquire version. Love the work on this. This is a really nice guitar. Um, anyway, we're talking about B.B. King's Woke Up This Morning. And by the way, I'm teaching a guitar workshop in June, along with Billy Flynn at Delmark Records um, in Chicago. And we'll be doing this song among others. So uh, this is in C. Here's a C6. And a uh, pretty famous intro here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and run down this famous intro. This is yet another song like Jody Williams, uh, Mucky Lou, it goes from rumba, shuffle, rumba, shuffle. That's the first one. And then he changes it. You almost just hear just this note. Do, 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 do. Pretty famous intro. So let's go over it. I use these two fingers, third and pinky, on the 10th fret B string, third finger, pinky on the 11th fret. Then you have this, 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 this over the, the C, it always gets your attention. Just like if you were an E and you went, like, it sounds like smokestack lightning or something. Um, it really grabs your attention. So it's the minor third and the six together. And then this is just the top three notes of a C bar chord. Ninth fret, 10th fret, 11th, ninth, excuse me, ninth fret, and 8th fret, B string, 8th fret, E string. That's part of your C bar chord, right? I hope this uh, reflection isn't too bad on this guitar, man. There's lots of lights everywhere. Maybe I'll go like this and see if that's any better for you guys. So this is open, I mean, this is the C note. And then 11th fret, B string, that's the 7th interval. Fifth interval, that's eighth fret. Third finger on the tenth fret, and then you're in your chord. Do 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 do. And then the second time around, he changes his mind. Notice there's two rolls. My favorite technique. I always talk about. It. So you have that, and then roll your third finger over to the tenth fret of the E string. So that's a roll, then first finger, and then roll the first finger over. So you got a roll going this way, and a roll going this way. Yeah. It's a great way to get to places. You don't have to stop and pick it up and put it back down. Third time, we're going to the four, okay? You can just do that. It's amazing. You take this, take the first finger off, and then you have the top part of your ninth chord of your four. So this is an F ninth, top three strings of that. Notice these two notes scream out the, fi the five chord. Because you could take that good old C seventh shape Here's a C, C7. Move this all the way up. Talked about this before. This is a the five, which is a G seventh. Or it fits in the middle of your G ninth. Then you have a roll from the G string to the B string. I mean B string to the G string. I must be dyslexic today. On the 10th fret. You can give it a little tug there. Not a tug, but a little little vibrato. Do, 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 do. I woke up this morning. And you can sort of answer that. He does it. I think he has a bassier sound. So, or just sort of stab it. He stabs his chords. BB always said he didn't play chords. I don't think so. He's playing chords, a lot of chords on this one. So this is just. Morning. 
Same thing, just get rid of that second finger and you're in the four chord. That's 10th and 12th. It really works. And it's like a G ninth. It's like the same principle of sliding those ninth chords. And you might be going, what the hell? Where are you going? What are you doing? So uh, we're gonna get to that when we get to the swing part, which is, there's really no more guitar than the dot, da da da, and then we're about to go, whoa, baby. And now we're going into the swing. I'm all alone. So you can go, the main chords are a C6, and then you might hear a C9. And you might hear a F9 and an F6. So the 6 is like 10 on the D string. It basically, let's look at it this way. Here's a top part of a C bar chord, I'm assuming you know that, then put your pinky on the 10th fret of the B string, and you have this. Yeah, there you go. Now when you slide it back and forth, then you're into a ninth chord. If you move this chord two frets down, that's kind of like the chord we did last week with my baby sweeter, isn't it? A different key. Then you can take this first finger and put it on the a string, seventh fret. And then with the same principle, here's your F, and then it's pretty. It's real pretty. And then sometimes he'll just go, he'll add his pinky on the 12th fret. I'm on the G knife now. So let's say we're, let's say it's a saxophone solo in the swinging part. So, whoa, baby. Sometimes I'll do a, a, a six instead of just like this. I'll just actually play like, like a C seventh and then put my pinky on the 10th fret. slid and then went back There's some cool chords in there, like this is a C6-2. It looks like an A minor. Now we're almost getting modal. I'm not going to go there. So it's your same A minor shape. Oh, baby. Take a swing with me. Oh, baby. Take a swing with me. Then I did a raise five. I heard that once here. I heard it maybe once in there. You could do that, the honky tonk thing. So that's that A minor shape. 12, 13, 14. E, B, G. Go back one fret with your first finger. There you go. Yeah, man. And you could, you could, and you could always get your second finger over here on the low E string. You know, I love that. Since my baby been gone, whoa, baby, take a swing with me. Yeah. So he really kind of jabs his chords nice and, how do I want to put it? It's just punchy. It's got a good bass sound on the chords. It's got a good bass sound on the chords. And that's it, man. I jazzed that one up a little bit. He does it a little bit differently on the uh, Live at the Regal, which is, you know, he goes, he just slides up.
you can see I'm missing here. Let's try it again. Or you could even walk into your ninth like that. So I just like going to the uh, original. Um, it came out in 1953, but you know, no one plays it exactly the same way. He didn't even play it the same way twice on the one. First he went, you know, he, he changed it around then, man. Two. So why not, you know, by the time Live at the Regal rolled around. So have fun with this song. It is totally a, a standard. People love the uh, tempo changes and the singing. And, and uh, I guess the other last thing I should say is... Uh, I'm talking about these jabbing chords that work with like a horns and saxophone and all that. What do you do if it's just like a trio or a four piece or something? You know, um, you got to play a little bit more. So I'm just going to pretend I'm doing a gig and somebody put 20 bucks in the chip jar and, our, and somebody wants to hear this song. come up with a simple rhythmic pattern and play that while I was singing and I did the best I could you're not going to come up with the exact same thing but that'll sort of get you through but if you've got the luxury of having a piano and, and all you got to do is just uh, stab those chords every once in a while then um, that's fine too you know I don't want to work too hard I don't want to distract I want to play something simple that I can play while I sing. So then you're coming into, you know, how to be in a trio and that kind of thing. Separate, separate topic, really. So anyway, I'm going to let you go. Um, hope you enjoyed this lesson and you found it useful. Um, if you ever Galveston stuff by the Galveston Guitar Lounge. And uh, thanks for watching. Um, join me on Patreon if you enjoy these lessons. We have a group chat. It's a lot of fun. Those are usually on Tuesdays. And uh, see you next time. Thanks a lot.